Hello, good evening. Good evening, welcome. Welcome. My name is Obinda. I want to share with you briefly um, what I've termed save to invest, but deal with the debt. Save to invest, but deal with the debt. Um, a business, when we start, um, has the potential of getting us into uh, you know prosperity into financial success into financial freedom but the same business can also put us into uh, uh, some problems sometimes and a lot of first-time businesses a lot of first-time business people can be in big uh, trouble when things don't work as planned and one of the things that uh, will push most people to stop doing business is when they are confronted with a lot of bad decisions which uh, culminate into debt. You know, maybe you had a project, you are ambitious, you did your calculations well, then maybe you went for some loans and, you know, it turned out that things didn't work. Before that project, before that business, you didn't owe anybody. And then just one bad decision, now you have a situation at hand that uh, you cannot handle. Now, these things happen to business people. And um, and if you have ever met any business person, you know, they, they, they tend to lose a lot of money. Uh, some way, somehow, and it's not unique with anybody. The trouble is our understanding of, um, you know, debt, of loans, of business difficulties, of what they call savings, what they call investment. As we try to build the business, as we try to get clarity, uh, the mistakes that uh, put us into debt, into bad situation, uh, if you continue to push, the same business that put you into bad situation, maybe the same business will get you out of that situation. And then you start to see excesses. And the moment that you see excesses, that thank you Nick. thank you thank you very much and the moment you start to see excesses that is the time that you have to pull out your financial intelligence or financial knowledge so that the profits so that the, the surplus that are coming you'll be able to plant them well and build uh, 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 you know some savings and then from there you can build some investment uh, out of that and so the problems that you, you get hit when you start uh, should not stop you no matter the difficulties, no matter the, 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 the debt that you get, you know, because, uh, you know, a lot of us were in bad situation when we started. Why? Because we, we, we didn't even really know what we we're doing. <laughs> so you went for somebody, you went for a friend's money, you went for uh, uh, your parents' money, you went for your grandmother's money, you went for somebody's money. And before you saw it, you were in a bad situation. Now, you should not despair because you're in a bad situation. You just have to fight back. If you continue to fight back, you will get to a situation where the business starts to make profit. The same business that we were troubled everywhere, the same business starts to make profit. And so when you start to make profit, what do you do with that? When you hear of savings, when you hear of savings, what most people think about is that they want to build a house. So they start to save, you know, so that they can buy a land and then they can, you know, spend the money uh, to build a house. Or they want to go and marry, so they start to save to marry. They want to buy a car, they start to save to buy a car. Or they want to go to school, they start to save to buy, uh, to you know, to go and pay school fees. Uh, that is a basic level of understanding of savings. The higher level of, 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 of savings is that you save to invest. You accumulate money, you invest that money. You don't save to go and buy a house and live in where that house is not going to bring you any money at all. Or you don't save to go and buy a Land Cruiser, you know, where that Land Cruiser is not going to bring in revenue. So you don't save to go and pay school fees, unless you know that that education is going to multiply quickly and, and pay that kind of, you know, uh, uh, expenditure back quickly. Or you don't go and save to buy iPhone, you know, or you buy, the things that you save to buy, you, the things that you save for, are the things that should multiply you know so i'm saving to i'm saving to say build another business 
I'm saving to build another business. Maybe I'm saving out of the business I'm doing. Maybe I'm saving 2,000 every month, 3,000 every month, maybe 100,000 every month. Depend on what revenue is coming in after everything is deducted. You know, so I'm, I start to save. So I want to save, so I want to raise maybe 100,000, 200,000, 500,000 within a year. Now, that target that I'm setting for myself, when I hit that, that target, I want to raise a million. When I get that million, I'm not going to use it to buy a land cruiser or buy a house or go to school, things like that. I want to have a plan for that one million. You know, I want to build another business that will multiply that one million into maybe five million, 20 million, 30 million. Or I want to save thousand every month. And so I have a plan for the thousand. A lot of the common understanding that we get in our country is that, oh, I want to build a house. And so I start to save thousand. I go to buy a land and I start to give them every month. I give them 500, 500. By the time I see it, three years, five years down the line, I've paid for a land which is 10,000. Now, if you have that kind of understanding of savings and finance, it will be very difficult for you to become wealthy and for you to become uh, financially free because you are saving to go and give it to somebody else who will be trading with that money. You know, so the, the person who is selling the land is accumulating, maybe he has about 200 people who they are taking money everywhere. And you think that is a good financial strategy. Maybe it is, maybe. But if I were you, I would rather accumulate that money and start to, maybe I want to raise 10,000. So I start to save. And when I get that 10,000, I don't need to spend that 10,000. And this is the knowledge that we all didn't get when we started to do business. And so you save money to go and buy a shoe. You save money to go, you know, all the things. We all know the kind of knowledge that they gave us when it comes to saving. So your mother will tell you that if you want to buy anything, save towards it. So you save one penny, two CDs, three CDs. Then when you get that money, save. Then you go and spend it. The thing is that you don't save to spend it. You don't save money to spend it. Whether you're going to whether you're going to build a house even for yourself or a car or education you don't save money to do that you save money you hit that target and you have to develop a, a, a vehicle or a machine or a business an investment to multiply that money and when you have multiplied that money to a certain percentage then you can start to use that money to build your house or to buy your car or to go to the school that you want in that case your savings i remember when you were children I will see my, my, you know, my grandmother, my grandfather, they will, when they farm, you know, the maize, the corn, sometimes they will keep some of them in the kitchen uh, for the next season. The ones that they are saving, they don't eat. They were eating out of the harvest. So they were able to harvest maybe 20 bucks. Then they will sell some of them. But the ones that they save, they don't save to eat. They save for the next generation. They save for, for multiplication. So savings is not for eating savings is not for eating but our financial knowledge as it were is not that strong so you know we get a lot of understanding from everybody and the average understanding that we get on savings is what is to save to spend save to spend and that is coming from people who have no idea uh, how to create financial freedom financial success so they think that they work they get salary and so they set the target for that. I want to build three bedroom house it will cost me two hundred thousand so I want to go to maybe I'm a mind to buy a land so the land is what ten thousand then I save for four years then I'll go and give them that money I buy the land the next the next three years I save to go and build that is a strategy that you will never be successful if that is your strategy, if you don't want to create financial freedom, financial success, no problem. But if you want to create financial success, you save to build a business. You save to invest in a vehicle that can multiply that money that quickly. And then when that money is multiplied, then you can start to use uh, assets from it. And so businesses fail and you can get into bad situation and, and sometimes it can get into a serious debt. Your problem or my challenge or your challenge is to make sure that you don't stay in the debt all your life and you get to fight back and when you start to fight back and your business starts to make profit you are going to start to save some of the profit now the agenda is that you don't save some of the profit so that you go and buy uh, land cruiser so that all your friends will know that oh your the, the decision that you made to build a business has become successful no you start to save so that you can expand your avenues that revenue comes comes um, comes to you so uh, when business is bad it can turn into debt and and some of the debt can be serious but 
it's life it's business sometimes people go through challenges so savings are for multiplications when you get to the savings they are for multiplication savings are not to be eaten savings you don't save to build to put into something that is not going to bring revenue that is not going to bring the money back and that is all that we all hear you save so that you can go and pay the school fees you say that you can buy a house you save that you can buy a phone you save that you can buy uh, whatever that they tell us to buy everything oh you save no you save to multiply that money and then out of the harvest out of the excess you can buy all the good things that you want to buy you know and this is a primary understanding that if you get if i get you'll be able to handle money well because money is one of the ways that people worry a lot in this life and i think that when you go to any any poor country when you go to any poor community when you go to any poor family the poverty is a proof that our understanding of finances is weak so we are poor because we don't understand the finances so africa you know africa's decision cumulative decision on finances on savings on investment is weak that's why africa is still struggling if you were able to master our finances well we will not be struggling so you go to somebody who has a lot of financial difficulties it's because the financial understanding is wrong and so our understanding of what they call uh, uh, uh our understanding of what they call uh, savings is is weak our understanding of what they call investment is weak our understanding of what they call even asset is weak our understanding of what they call uh, liability is weak so once those things are weak our results will be weak our results will be weak and and money financial understanding financial knowledge does not change because you're growing it does not even change because of the kind of uh, profession that you have it changes when you have quality financial knowledge quality financial understanding and so you can be anybody you can be an expert in anything if you don't sit down to study what these things mean we will struggle all our lives and we can carry those sense into even building our business so uh, our primary understanding of savings is to spend so we save we accumulate to spend we accumulate to spend and that's the basic but the, the the game changer is that you don't save to spend you don't save to build a house you don't save to buy a car you save to expand that which brings you the money you expand the avenue you stretch it so if you're a farmer you have one farm and you're saving money the next thing is that when you save the money you build another farm you know and you go to start another farm you go to start another farm now before maybe you were making ten thousand a month because now you have about ten farms you're making hundred thousand a month then the hundred thousand you can start to build your house you can start to buy your car you can start to do whatever you want to do because now you have more revenue coming in more than what you're spending it's a basic is a basic understanding between those who are rich and those who are poor and when they talk of, our, of our people who are in between i think that there's nothing like in between it's either you have money or you don't have money, or you are poor you know so they try to use a lot of terms to tell people that oh you are middle class and there's nothing like middle class it's either you have money or you don't have money you are rich or you're poor and so we fight we set targets for both and uh, if i set target i'll be able to get there if you set your target you'll be able to get there but there are some basic basic understanding that we need to have that if you want to do anything that is not going to bring you money then you have to use the excesses excesses the harvest the excesses that you have created out of that you start to build your house you start to build your but the thing is that it's very tough because it calls for discipline for you to say that i'm going to save ten thousand and when i get the ten thousand i'm going to trade without ten thousand build businesses without ten thousand to make sure that that ten thousand becomes hundred thousand or two hundred thousand and then out of that i'll be able to buy that car or that house no because we are in haste so i want to prove to my friend that that ten thousand can easily buy me uh, a toyota corolla you know so i save to buy toyota corolla maybe twenty thousand thirty thousand and then i put that corolla on the street and um, within two years that corolla is nothing now if i was taking throttle maybe two years i would not even use uh, maybe five thousand but i use thirty thousand to buy that corolla so that people will see that i i have also finished school and i'm working and i have a car now because of that thinking that's why most people will never have control over money because we we let people's understanding of what it takes to be successful eat us so quickly and so i want to own a house 
So when I put 10, uh, 500 or 1,000 into a savings, my wife also puts maybe another 1,000 to savings, you know, and we start to accumulate and we get to 30,000 and then we want to build a house because you have children. Yes, by the time you finish building the house, we probably we owe the bank another 100,000 and uh, we borrow from our family and friends. And so you put up a house, 200,000, 300,000, we live in it and we are spending maybe 200, 200 cities every month to save, you know, to maintain that house. It's not like we just, some people say that, oh, I don't want to pay a lot of rent. Maybe you're right. But when you build your house, it's not like you're, you're safe from spending. Even though you have built that house, after five months, six months, you start to see repairs. And, you know, because our understanding is that you have to own a house so that you become rich. Uh, you're seen as rich or you have to have a car. You have to wear a nice shirt. You have to live in a nice place. So we are quick to impress. The, the, our obsession of impressing people is more than our obsession to have financial leverage and financial freedom. And it's a very tough situation for a lot of people, you know. So that's that, that's the way it is. I mean, you want to wear you want to wear very nice shirt. You want to wear very, you know people who work to spend. They get salary to spend. You get salary, you spend it. You get salary, you spend it. You can't be rich. You can't be rich. So most people that you see, if they are genuine, if they are being honest, if they are not cutting corners, is where they work. If they are not cheating. And they are living on the salary that they make you see that it's very difficult for them to even meet the month uh, expenses in the house why because maybe you have two three children they are all going to school you pay maybe school fees thousand a month per head and you have a house maybe you even mortgage you're paying it is tough now those things are tough because we started wrongly because they told us that those are the things that will prove that you have become successful and so we think that to, to, to be rich means owning a house. To be rich means traveling. To, to be rich means uh, having a car. To be rich means that your children are going to class school. No, it's just a lot of stress that we put on ourselves. We can still live those kind of lives after a while when we have discipline. Assuming when you were 15 years and they told you that uh, you save money to invest the money. You don't save money to spend. And so your first... Uh, maybe your first car, you bought it out of the SS. So you saved 30000 to buy that car. But when you saved that 30000 you you were disciplined enough to make sure that that 30000 you were able to trade with something, you were able to build a business out of it, or you were able to invest that 30000 uh, for that 30000 to become maybe 100000 And then out of that 100000 maybe you bought a car 20000 Now, you would easily have 80000 somewhere. And can you imagine having 80,000 for the last 20 years and you were doing business with it? What it could do? And all of us have had that kind of opportunities, uh, one way or the other, where we had access to money. But when the money came, we went to buy a land. And we're not doing business with the land. We're not buying the land and maybe uh, 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 working on the land and say that I want to lift the value on this land and sell it. We're not doing that. We're just buying the land so that we could say that we own a land that we want to build a house. You know, and it's all cultural. It's all human. It's all the things that we grew up with. But let's face it. A lot of us work at places that we don't like. But we can't quit because if we quit, we have no uh, salary to come in. You know, so even if we, we don't like it at all, we, can't, we still have to be there because our financial decisions were not accurate from the beginning. So, so we spend um, investments are built on savings. You know, you save to, to invest. You save to invest. And we spend uh, out of the surplus. We don't spend the saving money. This, the one that you have saved, you don't, you don't use it directly. You know, you don't use it. It has to. There has to be inlet. There has to be outlet. In between is the channel, the mail. How we able to to mail the money that comes in will show how quickly we'll be able to uh, have financial freedom. And so it starts with the right understanding. It starts with the right understanding of what money is. What money is. So if you don't have the right understanding of how what what savings is, what investment is, and for most people, investment is buying treasure bills. And uh, so for for some others, it's by uh, mutual funds or stock, something like that, you know. And so that's the best thing that they know. I think that you can invest in business as well. And a business is, a, is an investment too, if you know. 
and and it's it's the best of it it's the best of it if you understand what business you're doing so you can invest and try a little of that investment to start some some business and if you get to do the business rightly any revenue that you're able to save you can easily multiply it through the business if you know what you're doing at least try something of that sort because our our little cheap understanding of what money is is what has made a lot of our people uh, poor and what has made a lot of our people cheat and lie all the time on money because some people are not proud because they have they have got to lie every day to support their their income uh, that comes to them uh, to the house why because the financial knowledge is short change the financial discipline is weak and so is that critical for us to get to understand the differences so I am talking about um, save to invest but deal with the debt as well so my point is that when you start business uh, sometimes you can get into trouble and a lot of us have had a lot of difficulties which we least expected will put us into into debt into bad situation but it's not really about the bad situation that your business put you in when you started it's really did you have the strength to fight back to fight back till you win because almost everybody else when they started some decision will push them into bad situation you know so you are so much confident of the business working and it didn't work and it's not just that it didn't work it left you with a lot of bad bad debt you know <laughs> and and it became sleep, sleepless night you could not handle it and then bit by bit you are able to get out of that situation now when you get that out of that situation and you have money how you are going to handle that money is very important and so our, our our primary understanding of money is that we save and once you save so you want to do wedding you start to save your man the man starts to save the woman starts to save they say that the wedding will cost you twenty thousand so you save for two years to go and do the wedding okay so they say that you want to buy a car you start to save to buy a car some of the some people don't even save to buy the car they go for loan to buy the car you know or they go for loan to buy the house that is even on another level but let's assume that you do are not going for a loan to to to, to buy the house or to even marry but you are saving when you save to buy that house or to build a house or you save and you spend the money directly into buying that car it will be very difficult for you to be ever financially free ever all your life you struggle to save to pay school fees to save to buy a car to save to buy clothes to save to pay hospital bills to save to to give to church to you know all those why because our understanding is that we spend we save to spend that's all we all know and we think that that is far better than going to borrow to spend and which is true that is if you don't know what what you're borrowing at and what you're borrowing for you know so at least some people don't want to owe anybody which is good but it gets to a point big project you may have to use some people's money how do you do how well you do that will be very much key to your success but the savings you save not to spend so if my understanding is to save to spend i will not be able to grow my business i will not be able to build the family finances because i always save to spend but you save to invest so you have saved ten thousand now start to think how do I multiply this 10,000 to 20,000 to 30,000 to 50,000 to 100,000? I still keep my lifestyle. You know, so I have a two bedroom apartment that I'm renting and I start to save money 30,000, 40,000. I should not change the apartment and go and maybe I'm paying 200 a month or 500 a month. Now that I have 30,000 saved, I want to go and pay 1,000 a month because now I think I have money. No, keep that lifestyle as it is. And look at how you can multiply that twenty thousand that you have saved, that thirty thousand that you have saved. How you can invest that, and the avenues to invest uh, will depend on your expertise. Nobody can be responsible for that. And so for most, so for most people, they will go to you know buy treasure bills and, and things like that. But uh, I think the best form of investments are the investment that you have the expertise to control the returns that you get on that money. So if you can start anything at all alongside what you do, you start to multiply that money. And if you can multiply that money, <laughs> you will be able to keep a lifestyle that you don't have to cheat people. You don't have to lie at the places that you work. Because let's face it, most people, 
most people if you look at the revenue that they get and the lifestyle that they keep some things that don't work out some things don't add up and most people love god they want to serve god they want to praise god but if you look at their financial knowledge something is eating them something and it's all about cutting corners cheating because the financial understanding is weak and that is a critical thing most people go through that we can lie about it it's true because if you have three children and you pay school fees thousand a month or thousand every time that's three thousand how much are you made how much are you paid that you have three thousand and then you have a house that you have built and then you have a car your wife has a car some things don't add up and you have no business and you work as a manager somewhere is either you're taking loan or you're lying somewhere you're cheating and none of us would want to cheat I don't want to cheat I want to do the things that are right but it gets to a point people will cheat because they cannot <laughs> they cannot sustain the livelihood that they have set for themselves and it's all because of the weakness of the financial knowledge that we have so the system is porous that's why you are a manager at your place and you have set a business that you have put your friend name on it so the business that people would have to come from outside to tender now you are you you are behind that business and you are giving the contract to that company so that you can have go and meet them somewhere and have your share and you call that business though so that's dishonesty that's not business that's dishonesty so you, you send you to go and get invoice you go there you add some things to it you are doing all this why because your financial understanding is weak you don't know what it takes to be to be saving uh, what it means to save and what it means to to invest for financial freedom and so if you start you can win yourself of the of the mirage of of lies that we, we we tend to live when our financial knowledge is weak you know so you can build something gradually if you start to change your understanding of what it takes to build money and to build uh, financial freedom and so the savings are meant to invest and you have to have a lot of discipline when you start to save so that you don't waste the money. When you start to save, you don't use that money to go and buy funeral clothes and go to funeral every week or go and party. Uh, no, it doesn't matter. You have money. Some, some, you can have 200000 on you and still be taking trotter. There's nothing wrong with that because you want to multiply it. You want to grow that money to a stage that when you start to buy that car, you can still have that money coming and growing. That's all we want to. We all want to grow. So we, you start a business; it starts to grow. Let the business grow to a point where you then you can have money to go and build that house, go and build, go and buy that car, and you still don't have to cheat and lie uh, uh, to keep your lifestyle and to keep your business running. You know. So it's the if you meet any people, you know, poor people especially people, uh, majority of us here. Uh, we cry to God for financial freedom, financial success, uh, prosperity, but the basis we don't know, and and I don't know how you are going to get financially free if you don't know the basis. If you don't know the basis, it's difficult for you to get financially free. And until you're able to know the basis, uh, it won't work. It won't work. So savings are meant to be multiplied. So you save two hundred thousand, two hundred cities. How do you grow that 200? Don't save to eat. Don't save to spend. Don't save to build a house. Don't save to buy a phone. Don't save to even go to school. Save to grow the money. But financial, if you have some money somewhere and that is growing, that is good. It even keeps your heartbeat low. Because when they are insulting you, you can say that after all, I've worked here and I was able to accumulate this. And so if you want to even build houses, you build houses, you build houses that you can rent for revenue. What's the point of building a 10 bedroom house and nobody is renting it? That is not an investment. Whoever told you that that is an asset is a lie. The asset should bring money. If the asset is not bringing money, it is like the car that I use. If it's not bringing money, it's just for showmanship. I'm just telling people that I drive a car, but it's not an asset. Well, the car is depreciating every day, tear away. That house, for you to maintain that house, if you finish building a house 2018, by the time it's 2022, you would have to put money on that house to maintain it. And if you are just living in that house and you are not renting, 
How can you say that you are saving money because you built a house? No, it's not an asset. It's, it's really uh, something else. It's not an asset. It's not an asset. You know, so, and who told you that if you sell it, you get that money that the, 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 the valuer told you? You know, it depends on the time you are selling that thing. Sometimes you want to sell a car, and they said, oh, oh, when you sell this car, you get 40000 That is in your head. Until somebody carries that money to go and pay you 40000 that is not the worth of that car. And sometimes when you're very hot, that car that you, you, th you thought you would sell is 40000 <laughs> you sell it 20000 <laughs> So we have an exaggerated opinion now about the valuation that we have on the things that we own. So a lot of people think that they, what they own is, 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 is very much worth it. No. That house that you think you will sell it 200000 300000 when you're hot and you're in a critical situation, you sell that house 100000 And you'll be shocked because you needed that money. You know, so our clear definition of some of these things is they are the things that are going to help us. Uh, to create the financial freedom and the financial success and if you look at how we handle money there's something that we don't know about what it takes uh, our financial knowledge is weak that is a fact we cannot uh, we are people who just save to spend that is the truth majority of us all that we know about savings is that we save to build a house we save to buy a car we save to go to school we save to buy clothes. We save to do the wedding. We save to do the outdooring. We save to go for the funeral. We save to go and bury our parents. That's all that we know about savings. That is the knowledge that they told us. They didn't tell us that the fundamentals of financial independence and financial prosperity is you save as a seed to plant, not to eat. You save as a seed to plant. And when you plant, there's a likelihood that it will multiply. You know, this is natural. If you go to the village, you'll see that those who saved the corn last year, they plant it, and once they plant it and they take care of it, it will multiply. So when you multiply and you harvest, then you can eat out of the harvest. You know, so you don't save directly to spend. And that calls for discipline. You save to grow it. You save to plant it so that it can multiply. You save to multiply, to grow it. To do business with it, to invest it. That is the meaning of savings. So if you have five cities, 10,000, 2,000, 200 Ghana, and you say that, oh, I'm saving to go and buy a land. Now, for you to build a house in Accra, two bedroom house, will not cost you less than maybe 80,000, 100,000. Now, you have 40,000, uh, 4,000, and you want to go and buy a land. When are you going to have the 100,000 to build a house? And some people will tell you that it doesn't matter. Just you do it bit by bit. That yes, you build a house, but you build by the time you finish that house, your financial knowledge is so weak that you will never become prosperous. So most people who tell young people that just go and buy a land and build because they don't think that you can become a billionaire or a millionaire. No, they just think that the best you can do with your life is to buy a house and build a car, uh, buy buy a, uh, buy a car and build a house. That is most of the people who think that you start as a young man buying a land and building. That is the most ambitious thing that they ever think of you. Is to, for you. They never see you as somebody who can control 500 million, 1 billion. No, they don't even perceive that. So they think that for you not to fail, then just buy a house, you know, build a house. At least that will prove that you came to live here. But you are not thinking. And the fact that you are not failing does not mean you are winning. So you're able to just build a house somewhere, but you will never be able to create wealth because the vehicles that, to, that create wealth, you cannot build them when you spend the savings directly. It means your understanding is weak. And our understanding, my understanding is responsible for my financial success. The knowledge that I have on money, yours is responsible for yours. So if yours is weak and mine is weak, there's a, with the results will reflect our financial knowledge. So you see that some people live outside the country. They work three jobs, five jobs. They sweat so much and they can and build a 10-bedroom house in their hometown in Accra and nobody lives in that house. So they spend the salary directly to build a house. That's why they never be millionaires. Never. They will never be millionaires. They will never control wealth. They will never be able to multiply money. They will never be able to build businesses and investments. Because what they came, what came is that they spent it directly. And you do not spend a savings directly. 
you find a way of multiplying it and how you want to spend out of that savings is up to you if you have 10 Ghana and you want to multiply it maybe you have to give yourself okay when the 10 Ghana has become thousand then I want to spend out of that that is your option somebody else would want to say that when the 10 Ghana is 200 Ghana I want to spend out of that it depends on your your threshold your your discipline level your discipline you know your 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 patience but you cannot build wealth without patience, without discipline. You know, and sometimes without even opposing thinking against the normal culture that everybody understands. And so your friends, you start to work, you start to save money. Your friends are buying all these cars, they are building houses. You know, you'll be weird. You'll be seen as very weird for you to uh, still be taking trotro and going to work and they are paying you 10000 Not that even the work will talk you out. Say, no, you can't come to work like that. We want to see you uh, rich. So they will push you to go and take a loan to buy a car, go and take a loan to build a house, so that they will be, they'll be proud that you, uh, the one that they work with, show uh, at least is successful. If you're financially if you're financially free, it is not in your house that you live in, it is not in the car that you drive, it is the investments that you have done. The investments that you have done, and so how much investments that you have, and how much money those investments bring to you. That is how much wealth you have. So it's not so much of you owning a house and for you to show to your friends that I have a house. There is no guarantee. To the average person on the street, if you have a house, it means you're rich. To the average person on the street, if you have a nice car, it means you're rich. To the average person on the street, if you if you have a nice shoe, it means you're rich. And that's the common financial knowledge that everybody has. And that's why most people are never wealthy. That's why most people will never control millions. Because it calls for a lot of uh, toughness in thinking. It calls for a lot of uh, understanding for you to build wealth. And so, my name is Obindako. I am wrapping up and uh, I have talked about save to invest, but deal with the debt. And so, as usual, I, I am an entrepreneur. So, you start business, you can meet a lot of troubles. Don't worry about the trouble. When you get into the trouble, solve that. And when your business starts to make some profit, understand the difference between investing and, 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 and saving. So businesses can fail and get you into trouble, into bad situation, and it can be that. Uh, savings are for multiplication. Savings are for multiplication. You don't save to eat, to spend. You save to multiply. So savings are for investments. And the kind of investment business can be an investment, estate can be an investment. Whatever that you study about investment is up to you. You know, so most people want to be successful financially, but our understanding is weak. We are impatient. We are impatient. We have not studied the subject well. And so we, we think that when I save to buy a car, it means that I'm rich. When I save to, to build a house, it means that I'm rich. No, you still have to keep that job or you won't eat. So you're not rich. You just have a job. And so your ability to get the salary and how much you save out of that salary and how you are able to multiply that savings will probably tell us how how the chances you have in terms of you creating uh, the prosperity that you so desire it really does not mean how much they pay you it means how much you're able to save out of your say out of your pay and how well you're able to multiply that money how well you're able to invest that money and you cannot invest what you don't know so you have to start start to study that subject so most people are trading all their energy, their time, working everywhere. They get pay and they put the money directly into expenses, directly into paying school fees, directly into buying cars, directly into building houses, directly into all direct expenses. You do not create money to spend directly. That is what keeps a lot of people in poverty for a long time. And so you go to some places, you see people own big, big, big houses and there are no factories in that city. Why? Because of the understanding. They think that if I build a big house, it means that I'm rich. Yet nobody owns a factory. In that you go to the streets of Accra, you can see every, every nice car. But we don't have factories. Because we, say we create the money to spend. We get the salary to spend. We get the business, it's profitable. We take the, 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 the profit, we spend it. So those who are multiplying the money, you see factories, you see companies springing up because they save to build companies, they save to build factories, they save to invest. So those you see that when they are saving, you see them springing, hotels, apartments, businesses are spreading everywhere. 
before they start to buy the houses before they start to buy the, the cars you know that's why they create the wealth and they, they, where you go to whenever you go to anywhere where you see a lot of cars where you don't see companies don't see businesses the understanding of wealth is that you have to create to spend for people to see that you're rich and that's why the economy struggles so you see people with a lot of you know a lot a lot of unemployment will be there because everybody is just raising the money to buy a car raising the money uh, to, to to own a house they will not even build apartments and rent to people they will first of all build the houses that they live in first and that is why people steal that's why people cut a lot of corners because the understanding is weak so they just raise to spend raise to spend raise to spend and so every time they have to have a way of making the money you have to have a way of making the money and that is the challenge that we have so it's a major shift for you to tell the africans that you don't save to spend you save to grow it you save to build it and you need to keep your lifestyle at a certain stage for a very long time to multiply the savings before if you want to show off you start to show off but we we make the money and the next thing is that we have the pajaro we have the land cruiser and, we, and, and the company is still struggling because we we have a void that we want people to, you know, we, we think that they, I think it's a problem with esteem where where people must see you in a certain stature to, to be successful. No, no, you don't need anybody to see you in a certain stature to be successful. Just look at your bank statement. If you're doing well, you will know. And if your businesses are doing so, the, it calls for some bit of discipline for us to continue to grow the savings, continue to invest it and not be disturbed about what people are saying what the culture detects you know what everybody else is saying it doesn't matter what matters is that you are growing the savings you're multiplying it you're investing it and that's how people have created wealth all over the world and so when you go you're not just seeing the nice cars that you see all over Accra that you don't have companies you don't have the factories we don't even know people are riding Range Rover and you don't know what they do what do they do they have big, big, big cars, big, big houses, and there's no factory, there's no business. Because they raise the money to spend. They raise the money to spend. So it has impact on the economy. But in some places, by the time you see somebody well taught, people who control well wealth, they have thousands. Before you own a Land Cruiser or something like that, or Range Rover, you have about 1,000 employees. Your business is making 10, 10 million a year or 10 million a month. Then you can use some of the SSCs to buy the Land Cruiser or the Range Rover and it will not affect you. Then you can build the 10 bedroom house and you still can live your life and it will not affect you. Because you are, you are doing that out of the SSCs, out of the harvest. And it's a switch. It's a big switch in thinking for the African to keep his low profile and still control a lot of wealth. It's difficult for us. It's difficult. So we just have to show that we have reached. And so um, it's a it's a tendency in, in you there's a tendency in me as somebody who grew up here uh, we are quick to let people understand that. and so the savings struggle the savings suffer because we are quick to spend them and that's why we are not creating wealth and that's why the people who are disciplined are building the factories building the the malls building the the the, 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 the apartment building go around a car and see the people who are building and sometimes go and look at the cars they even drive. Look at the places that they even stay. Because they understand the savings is for investment. So they save, they invest them, and they continue to multiply them. And by the time you see it, they have 500 million. They have 1 billion. And we, we only save the 100,000 to build a house. And once you build a house, that 100,000 is gone forever. It will never come. Why? Because you build that house to stay in. You did not even build that house to sell it. You even built it to stay, to stay. And that is a challenge. And that is a challenge for all of us to learn that we save to invest. We don't save to spend. And if you can get it clearly, you have the discipline to build any business. So whatever business that you're doing, if you start to see SSS, continue to accumulate them and see how, how you can put back into the business for the business to grow. And you continue to save to put it back for the business to grow. You continue to save it back. You know, so you have a target. I started a business with 2,000. Now the business is 100,000. I want the business to get to 1 million. 
before I even think of buying something out of that money. You know, so you, you have that discipline. You don't care what people think. You're still, you're still building your business. You're still building your business. If you have money, the truth is that if you have money, you don't care what people think of what you wear. You really don't think. It's the only when we are broke that we think of what people think we should wear. The man with a lot of money can wear his shirt and go. Because he's the one, when you are sitting down and you are, you are thinking of the ideas, he's the one to fund it. And if he's the one to fund it, he really, yes, he must need, look decent, but it's not so much to impress you, for you to give him money, you know. And so, it's the money. It's the money. How do you multiply it? How do you invest it? So, if you start to get money and you're doing a business, you open three shops, four shops, two shops, you build a construction company. Once you start to get money, push the money back into the company. Let the company grow. Let the company grow. Don't then need to try to impress anybody. It's no need. There's no need. Continue to grow the business. Continue to grow the business. If you have SSS, it is difficult for the business to collapse. But when you're on the red all the time, you are no, you are not far from the business collapsing. You know. So um, invest, invest, save to invest, and deal with the debt if they come. Deal with the debt. Deal with the debt and learn how to learn. Learn how the debt works and never run away from the debt. But once you are out of the debt, the, the troublesome, and you start to see money, make sure that you invest the money, grow the business. And if you have to start another business, start another business. But grow, grow it, grow it. Continue to grow and stop trying to impress people. That is how you we create money. It's not us waiting for somebody else to help us uh, to become successful. It's out of our own understanding little understanding on finances if you get those things rightly if you if you don't get anything at all if you understand that i save money to multiply it before i use it that alone can save a lot of us to save our business or to save our family and to save a lot of things so you save thirty thousand go and go and you don't use all the thirty thousand to do your wedding or use five thousand save the twenty five thousand go you go and look at how when your new family you can multiply that twenty five thousand to fifty thousand to one hundred thousand to three hundred thousand when people are struggling when the mates that you marry with when they are struggling with money you have excess at least if nothing at all money will not be a problem in the house and that will solve about ninety percent of the family's situation <laughs> and probably that will keep the family going you know so your intelligence is responsible for your peace <laughs> the choices that you're making is responsible for the peace that you have and the peace that i have and so thank you very much uh, for watching so remember to invest uh, your money and save to invest don't save to spend don't save to spend it's a discipline that we all have to have we start to get money from the project let's try to push it back into the company let's try to make sure that it brings in excesses as well then we can maybe along the line start to buy the Lamborghini and all those things that people buy but I actually I do understand why we have a lot of bad rules and people are using nice cars I don't really know maybe I'm wrong so thank you very much for watching thank you